2,000 years after the departure of Jesus Christ. The prophets are back to teach the real Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel, their true nationality. This is their campaign. You understand? They're called strangers. Read that again. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. So, who are the strangers that's up above us very high today? Esau. Well, East Indian. All right. Arab. They own, meaning what? They own everything. Agents, they own, they, they have their own businesses, they have their own stores, we don't have nothing. So read that again. Verse 43, the stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. What is that called? He shall lend to us, the stranger, remember, the stranger shall lend to us, but we shall not be able to lend to them. So what is that, what is that called? What is that going into? How do the strangers lend to us? When you go, when you go get a loan, you understand? You want a new car, you want a house? Go, the strangers lend that to you. But are we able to uh, lend something to them? Do we own anything to be able to lend anything to them? No, these are curses that fell upon us. Read it again. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Listen good, at my job, all right, I work in a warehouse, okay? And the majority of my managers are of the other nations, the East Indians, which are called Elam in the Bible. They run, the, they pretty much run the warehouses, Esau and other nations. They're the managers, they're the leads, they're always coming in, and they're on top of us. You understand? All right? Give, jump to, uh, let's get to the point, 48. What you want? All right. Because thou service not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all so we haven't served the Lord thy God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. We haven't kept his high holy days. Who are who holidays are we keeping? Esau's high, uh, high holy days. We, we keeping his uh, holidays. So we haven't served the Lord God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Because at this time when he did give us uh, our holidays, we wasn't serving him with the gladness and joyful heart as we do with Christmas. As we do with Thanksgiving. Right. We can't wait for Christmas and Thanksgiving. I got a question. Is Christmas, did God tell us to celebrate Christmas? Huh? Who was precious at one point in time? Say it again? That one was precious at one point in time, right? Uh, my question is, did God tell us to celebrate Christmas? Where do Christmas come from? All right, give me Jeremiah 10 real quick. Jeremiah 10, watch this. It's Christmas in the Bible. Not the way, not Christmas is in the Bible, but not the way you think it's in the Bible. The God didn't tell us to celebrate. Watch this. Jeremiah 10. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 10 and verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. So, God says, be not dismayed at the uh, heathen. No, be just, be, read that again. Learn not the way of the heathen. So he said, learn not the way of the heathen. The heathen are the other nations. All right, read. 
and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Why? Because the other nations, they seek the signs of heaven. Worshiping what? The stars, the moon, the sun. Today you call it uh, what? Horoscopes. The constellations. Read. For the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For, for the customs of the people are vain. Meaning what? They're lies. Read. For one cut if a tree wait, out of... Wait, 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 wait. What consists of Christmas? What, 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 what is needed for Christmas? A tree. A tree? What type of... What do you do with that tree? How do you decorate it? What do you... Ornaments and silver and all that? What type of songs you sing? Think of one song with silver and gold, silver and gold, right? Watch this, read. For one, for one, cut if a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe, they deck it with silver and with gold. We deck it with what? With silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. Today you put it inside a, uh, you put it inside a little a stand or whatever, okay? But God said, you gotta go. All right, look, let me give you um. All right, leave you got you heard Deuteronomy. Get Deuteronomy 22 and 5 for us. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Huh? I'm, I'm gonna, just gonna stick with you, sis. Just gonna stick with you. <laughs> the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So we read this earlier for the one sister. I'm gonna read it again for you. This is, do you know what sin is? What is sin? Sin is, yeah, not obeying the commandments. Sin is how we all really do. Sin is what? Not obeying the commandments? Is sin digging up in your nose? What is sin? Is stuff... Alright, watch this. 1 John 3 and 4. The book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is breaking God's law. So you're right. So we're going to go to a law that you are in the midst of a breaking. Alright, go back. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Which is what? What is that? Oh. Read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. It says, what, are, what is women wearing that pertains to a man? Pants. Pants. All types of pants. You understand? So, when you wear pants, when the woman putting on pants, what do that do to you? What do that, how does that make you feel when you put on pants? I've been wearing pants all my life. I ain't never wearing shirts, so I can't take this. Okay, but it gives you a manly spirit. Right. Don't pants give you a manly spirit? You walk around, you, you know what I mean? You were, you were raised like that. But putting it on, that's why the laws are spiritual. So when you, that's why God said not to break the law. You understand? Because it puts the spirit of a, a man's spirit on you. To the point you like fighting. You like fighting, don't you? No. I fight if I have to. <laughs> I like fighting. But anyway, my point is, it puts a manly spirit on you when you wear pants, sis. To the point you trying to strut like a guy and all that. It puts that spirit on you. Read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination. So neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. You see this in the uh, rap world, right? They wearing skirts. They put, it puts a feminine spirit on them. You understand? So, so what must you do? God wants you to put on a what, sis? Huh? A skirt? Just like the sister right here have one. Or a dress. Step, step forward, sis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Put on a skirt or a dress, sis. You understand? With the fringes and the border of blue on it. You understand? Be a woman, like you're supposed to be, with a feminine quality. Not walk around like a dude. Cause that's what those pants put on. Matter of fact, you have pants come with a zipper. What do you need it for? We're gonna be stopped. Listen, listen, hey, what are you doing? I like that. Listen, listen, good though. What do you need it 
Okay. You don't need it. So why would you wear pants if you don't need the zipper? We need the zipper. I was raised like this. You understand? But that's why we have to repent. That's why we gotta change. Listen, watch this. Watch this. Stay. Give me Psalm 197. Give me Psalm 197. Hold on. Don't go nowhere. Relax. Relax. Come come live with us. The Book of Psalm, chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. So. You ever, you ever heard, can you be perfect? Is it possible to be perfect? It's not? Read it again. The law of the Lord is perfect. Come out here with us. Give me a, uh, drop that. Give me Matthew 5, 48 real quick. Listen good, sis. Listen good. Matthew 5, 48. Because a lot of people say, oh, you, I can't be perfect. It's, it's impossible to be perfect. I, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. But watch this. Watch this, because listen, we on our, we striving to become perfect. You understand? It's possible. You could do it. Breathe. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. You hear that? So Christ said, listen good. Christ said, be ye therefore perfect. Read it again. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So Christ said, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. How do you become perfect, sis? That's my question then. Follow what? Okay, watch this. Good, good, good. And the Psalm 19 and 7. <laughs> the book of Psalm, chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. Perfect. So what makes you perfect? Now you know you can become perfect. What makes you perfect? Following the law. So what law did I just read to you? And what was it about? Right. You're not supposed to wear any pants. So the, remember, the laws of God is perfect. So if you keep if you keep that law of not of wearing a dress or a skirt, you are what now? You are what? Says, listen. If you keep that law wearing a dress or a skirt, that makes you what? Makes you perfect. Huh? No, it makes you perfect. Within that law. Within that law. Within the law. That law. Follow all the law. All right. Yeah. Read, read. Step to perfection. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. All right, so the testimony of the law, I mean, of God's laws is sure making wise the simple. All right? So keeping God's laws makes us wise. Because why? Our people are simple. Our people are simple people. You can look around and see the simplicity in our people. Okay? All right? Read that again. The law of the Lord is perfect. The t converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Making wise the simple. Give me First Kings eight. So we know we come out here to teach repentance, repentance to the twelve tribes of Israel. You blacks, you Hispanics, and you natives. Okay, that's what we are here for to bring our people back to this Bible. We know Donald Trump won the election. We understand that, but it's a wake up call for our people. That we must come back to who? That we must seek God. Okay, read. But how do we do that? We must repent. How do you repent? Read. The book of First Kings, chapter 8, verse 46. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not. So, if the Israelites, you blacks, expands and natives, sin against God, for there's no man that don't sin, read. And thou be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy. And God be angry with you, blacks and Hispanics, and deliver you to the enemy. Read. So that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy. So what we carry with, brother, I got a question. What we are carrying away captive? Yes, sir. To the land of our enemy? Yes, How do we get over here? Shit. You slave. You slave. Can we pull down the Bible? Yes, sir. Give me that Deuteronomy 2816. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord 
shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. What? With ships. With ships. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. So God says the way he said it, that's the way it was going to happen. And it did happen that same exact way. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. So he said we would not see what again? Our homeland, which is Jerusalem. Right. And we will be sold to our enemies on auction blocks. So when we docked off those ships in Charleston, South Carolina, along the coast of Virginia, okay, Jamestown, all right, New York, the Hudson River, we were being sold to our enemies. Philadelphia, we were being sold to our enemies. You see Roots, okay, uh, Mandingo, all those uh, slave movies. All right, read. Read that again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. Slave men and slave women. Read. And no man shall buy you. No man, meaning what? No man was able to save us. We had great leaders like uh, Marcus Garvey that rose up in the 40s. Okay, he came, he came in the, uh, being a great leader for us. But he uh, couldn't do it. We had Malcolm X. He tried, but what happened? He fell. Martin Luther King. He tried. What happened? He fell. Read that again. Okay. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. And no man shall buy you. Right, so no man was able to save us. The only true deliverer and savior we have is Christ, our black Messiah. That's, that's right. right. The only one that's going to save us out of this captivity. Right. You understand? That's who we must wait on. All right? All right. I have a question. Do you uh, you know about the Sabbath day? Saturday. It's Saturday, right? So how do you know? I mean, how do you know about the Sabbath? How do you know it's Saturday? When do it start? When does Sabbath start? Friday at 12, I Friday at 12? 12, 12 morning. Okay, watch, okay. Where you, where you learn that at? I'm not sure. <laughs> but the, I, the I know it's Saturday. The oppressor, the Sabbath, the Sabbath, the Sabbath, wait, wait, Saturday. Watch this. Give me Daniel 725 first. The because Saturday, the oppressor told us that the day starts at 12. You understand? Midnight, right? That's Midnight. what you're speaking of? Yes. Right, we learned that from our oppressor. Watch this. Watch this, I'm going to show you what God said. And this is the, the book of Daniel, chapter 7, and verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. So this is talking about the so-called white man. He spoke great words against God by saying he's God, by putting himself up as God, by, by uh, having our people worship this image, this white Christ. Read on. Read on and, top of it. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. So he did, he wore us, he wore us out how? Slavery. For over what? Six, from 1619 on up to today, we've been worn out. I'm still being worn out my job. I can't go home to the work and finish. You understand? Read. And think to change times and laws. And he think to change time and law. What uh what uh what just happened last what the last Sunday or something? Daylight savings? We had the clock went back what an hour? Hour, yeah. Who 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 started that? The oppressor, so-called white man. Read that again. And think to change times uh -huh. and laws. So he thinks to change times and laws. Who taught us that the uh the day starts at midnight? The oppressor. Right. right. Read it again. Read it on the top again. Read the whole thing. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, uh -huh. and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. So how did, what laws did he change? What laws did he change? 
Give me some laws that the uh, so-called white man has changed. Or that he passed. What about homosexuality? Did he pass that law? Yeah. He passed that law, right? He passed the law, right. But God said that's an abomination. So he thinks that, remember, he thinks it change times and laws. You understand? Yes, sir. For, for example, the Sabbath day. We know it's what? It's on a Saturday. He changed it to what? Sunday. Sunday. So now our people following, the, the mass of our people is following, thinking the, uh, the Lord's day is on what? A Sunday. Right. But God said it's on Saturday. Oh, New Year's. New, he said New Year's is in the dead of what? Winter. The New Year actually start when? Around springtime. But the stuff's when life start growing, uh, trees start uh, blossoming. You understand? Yes, That's where April Fool's came from. But the, what, the whole point is he uh, changed the laws around. He changed everything around. You understand? Yes, All right, give me uh, Genesis 1 and 5 real quick. Let's show you what God said. The book of Genesis, chapter 1 and verse 5. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So when is the when is what what is one day? What is one day? Time. <laughs> listen good. Listen, hey, listen, listen, listen. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So one day consists of what? The evening and the morning. Thank you. That's what God said. You understand? So it don't start at midnight. So when the sun from sundown to sundown is one day. All right? That's how we know when the Sabbath starts. Okay? So, so Friday sundown starts the Sabbath. All right? When it's completely dark. Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. So when the sun drops tonight, Saturday is it's, it's over. Okay. You understand? Yes, sir. Give me uh Exodus, give me Exodus uh, 20, 20 and 8. Alright? So what consists of the Sabbath? You know, do you know you know it's on Saturday, obviously. So what do we have to do on the Sabbath? How do we keep it home? Because it's not just okay, it's Sabbath. You don't just go around saying that, oh it's today's Sabbath, you know, and that's it. Nah, God, it's a requirement on that day that God gave. Right, it's God's law. Right, so what do we do? What do we have to do on the Sabbath? I don't you know, know exactly. All right, don't worry, we're going to show you. We're going to show you. Read. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. All right, so God said we not do any work on that day. So from six days, so from Sunday, from Sunday, you do, what's the first day of the week? Monday. You sure about that? <laughs> you sure the first day of the week is Monday? Beginning of, I believe it's Sunday, right? Right, you look at a calendar, you, you probably, our people look at a calendar all day, but we can't figure out the first day of the week. Sunday. Do that make sense? First day of the week is Sunday, so from Sunday to uh, Friday is six days. Six days. Uh, okay, so when that sun drops, that starts the Sabbath. You understand? Which is what? The Sabbath. Which, Saturday. Which is what? The seventh day. Read that the part Saturday. again, read that part again. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Right. So the seventh day, which is today, is the Sabbath. All right. So there's more requirements on the Sabbath that we must keep. All right. One is uh, no cooking. All right. Give me that in Exodus 35 and 3. No cooking. We, we're not to cook on the Sabbath. All right. I know our people, they be like, uh, wait, we, what do you mean no cooking? What do you mean no cooking? 
I gotta eat, right? But listen, we, okay, we do it. We do it. Than, you understand? We make what? We eat what? Sandwiches, so that's salad. Okay. Actually, today you might eat the healthiest. You understand? Yes, sir. Right. Leftovers. You understand? So, but we're not the cook. We're gonna show you. Okay. Eat but don't cook. Eat but don't cook. Right. Okay. okay. Read the Book of Exodus, chapter thirty-five and verse three. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. So you should kindle no uh, fire upon the Sabbath day, all right? So don't, don't heat it up. Don't put nothing in the microwave. You understand? No heat in anything, all right? 23. All right, read that. Watch this. Because before the Sabbath, there's a preparation period. So there's a, a time to prepare for the Sabbath. Listen good. The book of Exodus, chapter 16 and verse 23. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today, and see that which we which ye will see, and that which remaineth over. Lay up for you to be kept uh, until the morning. Right, so that's called leftovers. So God is saying, look, cook what you gonna cook before the Sabbath start. Lay it up for tomorrow. This came out because you can't cook. So we go. You have leftovers. You like, whatever you had left over, whatever you are, to, you can eat that. All right. Give me a. Uh, okay, give me the advice. So also on the Sabbath day, we're not allowed to buy or sell anything. Then they'll send so we don't have to go out and buy anything ourselves. Right? Watch this. Read. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 10 and verse 31. And if the people of the land bring where or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day. Right, so we're not to go out and buy anything on the uh, the holy day, which is today, which is the Sabbath. Right, right, right. You understand? Any fiddle, anywhere, anything. Why? Because the other nations are set up around us. You understand? So today is wide open. All stores are open today. You understand? You ever, you ever notice that the stores, are, all the stores are wide open today. They're discounted today, but tomorrow everything is closed. You understand? Why? To keep us in sin. To keep us right with God's home. I buy everything open. You can, you can find everything open today. That's why they pay That's why, exactly. That's why they pay you on Friday. They pay you on Friday. They set you up and sit the next day. You see how they go? They know what they're doing. They're 10 steps ahead of us. You understand? And I'm going to show you that too. Watch this. Read that again. And if the people of the land bring where or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day. Right. So, would you, now, what is the holy day? What is that? Sabbath. Right. Good, good, good. All right. Give me, um, give me Judah 5 and 20. I'm going to show you how these nations think. I'm going to show you how they do. Because I, I made a point. I, I said, the brother brought a point that you get paid Friday and they set you up to go by today, which is the Sabbath. So they keep you in sick. You understand? Because I know, as soon as you, what happens when you see your check in the, uh, in the account on Friday? What happens? You already thinking of everything you want about tomorrow. You already setting yourself up to go buy something tomorrow. You understand? Right? So these nations know that. Watch this. The book of Judas, chapter 5 and verse 20. Now therefore, my Lord and Governor, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their God. Stop. So this is uh, an Ammonite, a so-called Japanese, talking to an Assyrian about us, 12 tribes of Israel, blacks and Hispanics. So they know our history. Showing you the other nations know all of our history. So he's telling, he let the, uh, the Assyrian general know about us. Read that part again, listen. Now therefore, my Lord and Governor, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their God. So they know if we sin against our God, meaning what? Breaking God's laws. Read, read. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. They know we will be on the bottom. They know that. 
if we can keep if we can keep these blacks, Hispanics, and natives buying on the Sabbath or uh, celebrating Christmas or Thanksgiving or any of these holidays, they know that's our rule. You understand? On uh, throughout the year, I think it's yearly. How much do uh, blacks and Hispanics spend yearly? 4.3 trillion dollars we spend on a yearly basis. We get 4.2 one 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 point. It's 1.1 trillion dollars for black spend, and the, 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 the Hispanics spend 1.3 trillion. All right, so when you go. When you combine it together, that comes out to, a, a, of course, a larger number, right? But the whole point is, they know that. Read that part again. Now, therefore, my lord and governor, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall go up, and we shall overcome them. So they have overcome them. They, I mean, I'm sorry. They have overcome us. You understand? They know that that's our rule. All right? So if we, for example, who here eat pork? You eat pork? No, sir. You don't eat no pork, no bacon, no nothing? No. All right. But anyway, when you go into the grocery store, what is the cheapest meat on the market? Pork. You know, right? You eat pork? No. But you know that it's the cheapest thing on the market. Pork is cheap. It's cheaper than any of the other meat. Why? Because it is. Because the scripture, they know our uh, history. They know if, because uh, give me Leviticus, give me Leviticus uh, 11 and 7. Give me Leviticus 11 and 7 rule. Let me show you the law, uh, dietary law. Read. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 7. And the swine, though he divideth the hoof, and he be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. Right, so that's in God's law about not eating the swan, eating the uh, pig. Okay, now go back to Judith, I want to finish that up. Please. Verse 20, uh, the book of Judith, chapter 5 and verse 20. Now therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin. So these other nations know that they keep us sinning, buying on a Sabbath, eating pork, all right? Keep us, uh, keep our women in pants, keep our men shaving their beards, balling their head. They know that that's our ruin. That's what's going to keep us on the bottom. And they, they'll keep them on the top, free. And let us go up, and we shall overcome them. But if there be no iniquity in their nation. So here's the stipulation. Read. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by. So if there be no iniquity, meaning we keep the Sabbath, we don't be eating uh, pork, uh, all right, we grow our beards, women start uh, looking, uh, dressing in dresses, skirts, okay, in modest apparel, they know that they need to leave us alone. That's when they. That's when that brings on that fear. You understand? Read that. Read that again. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them, and their God be for them. Right. So they know that God Himself will defend us and be for us once we repent and keep God's law. I'm Elder Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.